whereas we believe in precedence and there is some difference between their law and our laws are concerned. But so far IPR laws are concerned, it is almost the same. But the procedural law being a little bit different, so there is some difficulty in tying up with them. So what we have been following is in India, the British law and the, uh, 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 the cases that decided by the uh, uh, House of Lords, and the British courts, and also by the United States of America, as I said, in that eBay's case we have followed. <clears throat> we have also been following some of the judgments delivered by the Federal Circuit of the, uh, uh, federal circuit of the uh, intellectual property uh, cases there. And then China is also <clears throat> is vitally interested in protecting their interests. Because their problems and our problems are almost the same. Now, I request Mr. Justice P. S. Narayan, the judge of the Andhra Pradesh High Court, to speak uh, his views. They are talking here uh, to show and reflect the importance of the subject. I will be short and brief, though the subject is a very vast one. The challenges to the intellectual property rights is a subject of global importance. If the different facets of intellectual property rights to be dealt with, the subject being a vast one. It is difficult to crystallize the subject in the form of short speech or an article. But however, I will make an attempt to touch certain of the essentials of these rights in the context of the challenges in free. The tolerable expression, intellectual property, is not only a popular expression worldwide, but also equally an attractive one. This field in the recent past had expanded its tentacles too far so as to enter the new area school. Intellectual property may be characterized as information that can be incorporated in tangible objects at the same time in unlimited number of copies at any place in the world and the property is in the information in those copies are not in such copies as such. Broadly speaking, this subject may relate to copyrights, trade bonds, designs, patents, developing <coughs> indications of goods, plant varieties, architects, and information technology as well. The relevant legislations are well known. The cyber law or information technology had a new global importance. And the law relating to say he is at the infant stage and fit to grow. <coughs> the master of law in this field, even in other nations, appears to be very limited. And a careful scrutiny and so so. The Information Technology Act 2000, Act 21 of 2000, is an act to provide legal recognition for transactions carried out by means of electronic data, interchange, and other means of electronic communication commonly referred to as electronic commerce, which involve the use of alternatives to paper-based methods of communication and storage of information to facilitate electronic filing of documents with government agencies and also to amend Indian Penal Code, Indian Evidence Act, Bankers Book Evidence Act and Reserve Bank of India Act and matters connected there with and incidental there too. P. Council regulations also being well known. I don't want to take much of your time by dealing with several of these details. Intellectual property can be broadly divided as property falling under copyright and property falling under what can be called as industrial property. 
which is inclusive of heritage designs, trade box, and geographical indications of source, etc. The relevant sections and the definitions I had dealt with more of this article. I just referred to the Information Technology Amendment Act 2008 received the assent of President on 5-2-2009, which was published in Visit of India on 5-2-2009. The relevant sections which had been amended suitably I had dealt with. In spite of that, on careful scrutiny, I find that some more amendments may have to be brought in to meet the challenges. The amendments, just I had dealt with, I read a copy. It may be so great. <coughs> the amendments are not given for want of time. In both UK and USA, the relevant legislations are UK Data Protection Act 1998, Communications Decency Act 1996, the OCA Digital Signature Act 1995, the No Electronic Theft Act 1998, Digital Era Copyright Enhancement Act 1997, the Digital Copyright Clarification and Technology Education Act 1997, the Copyright Protection Act 1995. The first parliamentary intervention in the war in this appeal can be traced to the Statute of Monopolies in 1624 and the Copyright Act 1709. In the case of internet jurisdiction, multiple parties can be involved belonging to different parts of the world and hence the international law, international covenants, unicentral modern law on electronic commerce became very relevant for the purpose of implementing different legislations. It is pertinent to note that the documentary evidence related to the computers can be real or hearsay, or it can be derived also. And under the UK Police Criminal Evidence Act 1984 and UK Civil Evidence Act 1968, this kind of evidence can be admitted provided certain tests are satisfied. That is the subject by itself. The growing global importance of the cyber law is posing new challenges and in view of the peculiarity involved in this field, an understanding between the nations of the world by treaties or covenants may be of considerable importance in the absence of which the implementation of these legislations may be very near to an impossibility. Though Several challenges are posed by the internet. It is convenient to note that there is no treaty governing the nations of the world. For the legislations made by the respective nations alone hold the field, and this may not be sufficient. It may also be noted that the software copyright law is peculiar in its own form due to <coughs> the nature of the sea. There is some difficulty because of the peculiarity of the problems to identify and detect the violations and even if it can be done, several problems relating to jurisdiction are involved for the countries to, to such cases. Cyber crimes can be against persons, property, and the state too. It is pertinent to note that this cyber terrorism can be cited as an example for cyber crimes against the state. Hacking, cracking, unauthorized trespassing of communities in cyberspace, cyber stalking, and also cyber harassment of various kinds can be mentioned as a few of such cyber crimes. In view of the definition of telegraph under the Indian Telegraph Act, cyber crimes can be in relation to telegraphs too. The intentional damaging or tampering of the telegraphs had been dealt with in section 25 of the said Act. The Copyright Act 1957 is an act to amend and consolidate the law relating to copyright. The the subsequent amendments brought in being well known. I did not deal with this aspect in elaboration. Just I will refer to only certain decided cases under as a close. In the Indian Performing Rights Society, area 1977 Supreme Court 1432, Justice Krishna observed world opinion in defense of human rights to intellectual property led to International covenants and municipal laws, commissions, courts, and organizations calibrated to protect works of art. India responded to the universal need by enacting Copyright Act 1957. I had dealt with the 
different provisions relating to the copyright act in details in the cases. I'm, I'm I just refer to certain of uh, the decisions which have been decided by the force of USA and also I specifically refer to the Data Consultancy Services case 2005 when ACC in elaboration and the relevant passages. I also refer to AAR 2004 Supreme Court 3540, the Satyam Infoway Limited and also Arkuma Rispana case 2005 1 SEC 582 and the other cases of <coughs> the different countries in detail. I will also refer to the decisions of the Indian Supreme Court and the decisions of different countries relating to the intellectual property rights. As far as the copyright law is concerned, Related to different aspects, <coughs> I have referred to AAR 1984 278, AAR 1982 Calcutta 245, AAR 1959 Madras 410, AAR 1979 Bombay 17, oh, and also yeah. decisions of Kerala Law Journal, Bombay Law mm -hmm. and the other decisions on the subject in collaboration, and also different provisions relating there. Mm -hmm. I am speaking, I am not touching all those aspects for want of time. Next, coming to the concept of trade law is distinct from property law. AAR 1972 Supreme Court 2488, leading decision of the court. The essential features of the trade law had been explained in series of decisions, well explained in AAR 1965 by 214. Some other nations are there, inclusive of at least three or four nations of the export. Then I have dealt with the deceptive similarity, the striking similarity, the essentials to be established in relation to dispute relating to assignment of trade, trade law and the other aspects. Then I have dealt with the paychecks can be either product patents or process patents. Article 171 of the Fifth Agreement deals with the patent on the subject matter. I have referred to AAR 2000 Delhi 23, where invention had been dealt with in elaboration. AAR 1982 Supreme Court 1444, the leading decision on this aspect. Then I have dealt with the definition of design, the subjects relative to design, and also the decisions, both reported in PTC and also the other journals. The modes of law in this branch and contribution of force in this regard is really noteworthy. Courts are expected to decide <coughs> only real questions in controversy are not hypothetical questions. <coughs> and hence several questions are left unanswered since such questions never come for consideration before the courts and these gaps may be filled only by passage of time. India also is signatory to WTO agreement and consequently bound by the fifth agreement as well. Effective and proper understanding between the nations may be the end of the day, being an immense necessity arising out of compulsion due to new technological developments of the cyber world and other like challenges. As far as the other aspects are concerned, when interim order to be granted, the essentials, the all other details, the subject I had dealt with in elaboration in at least 10 to 50 books of mine dealing with the different aspects, including the intellectual property rights. There is a book of mine on Althea Rights. With this, I conclude. Thank you. Thank you, Justice Narayan. <coughs> you have rightly said that uh, emphasis should be given to the cyber crimes. We need new legislation for internet uh, infringements, downloading materials of uh, literary work from the... Uh, these aspects uh, are also challenges. Now with these, I now request Mr. Parak Tripathi, the additional Solicitor General of India, to put forth his views.